Engineer 775 here. I am working on another job. Cool job down in a basement. We've already added our solar array. Um, and we are um, working on a couple of things here that we haven't done before. One of them is to take that ATS from a Generac and remove it and let the Solarks be the, the ATS. So there's a lot going on here. I'm going to show you what I'm doing in this wiring trough. It's going to be our mounting wall. We've got two fortress batteries. So anyway, um, we've got a couple, probably three days to get this thing wired up. And um, hopefully you'll like it. Okay, we're mounting all this equipment on a superior concrete poured wall. We try to prep these wiring troughs before we hang them on the wall. So we're pre-drilling holes to mount them, whether you use tap cons or nail in, however you determine you would like to mount it. The tap cons make it removable if you mess up. Uh, add your ground bars, add your power distribution blocks, add any wire management gizmos, add your battery combiners, whatever needs to go in here. It's such a pain to do it later. Okay, a big part of this project is to make sure this Generac runs on two-wire start. So Willis has gone down to test our two-wire start function. We set it in here. We followed this uh, manual. Oh, I hear something going on. It's going to start right now. Yeah, baby. So all I did is probably spent too much money for this little home standby remote start kit for a Generac. And depending on which controller you have, it tells you which pins that you need on the back of the controller. So on the back of the controller, this is an old one. We had to use this one because ours is like a 2018. We had to use the J18 pin, J210 pins. We had to do these pins to just put, basically putting two wires in there for the two wire start and then telling the controller that you're doing a two wire start. Um, the other, there's instructions in this. The other thing is to make sure that your battery charging, we're taking the ATS out of the system. And so, what comes along for the ride, as you might know already, is that you've got to make sure you can maintain the battery. We want the Solark to be the total controller of the generator. So it's a little kit you can order, model number, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there you go, G0071090. And uh, so we've just basically, we put a little light switch in the basement to simulate the two-wire start. and. Uh, and he just turned it off. Where's your switch? Oh, you put it so you could hear? Where's your switch, inside? Yeah, down here. And so, just got a little switch rigged up, and then we also, there's the charger on board for the generator requires 240 volts. It's only like half an amp, but, so we got a little two-wire start rig right here. We can turn it on, and that should start up the generator. And, uh, oh, yeah, I just heard her start. So, proof that we can two wire start. So, we're going to take that control over to the master of the Solarks. And uh, we can call him master and slave. What do we call him now? Uh, helper? Leader and helper. Leader and helper? <laughs> oh, man, are we so PC or what? Um, so, control there, and then. We added a breaker. Well, I got to go get a double pole 15. We're now we're going to use this breaker. I had it on the truck, and to get uh, 240 volts out to the charger, and I'm going to put an inline fuse and fuse protect it at around six. I know these were 6.3 amps, I believe. We're going to fuse protect those. Inline fuse that. So we're taking this ATS out of here. It's in our way. It's bothering us. 
So it's coming out of here. We're gonna put another one of those. That's a bypass for grid or solar. And then we're gonna take the output of that and bring it over to the one side of the manual transfer switch. Another one of those. And then we'll be able to select between generator and whatever's coming off of this wall. I hope that makes sense. So it's a combination of two, gener two transfer switches that give us our desired income. We also need to junction or PDB or what we call pigs, make a junction so we can take the generator power over to the input, the gen input of the um, Solark so that we can charge batteries if we need to. So two Evolt Max is about to be getting hooked up right now to two 600 amp um, deep blue C combiners. Uh, again, we're on a superior wall, so we mounted all this stuff prior to putting this gutter on the wall. We put our power distribution blocks in for grid, for load, for batteries, wire management, ground, ground bars, and put this baby up. Another thing we did is instead of, um, we know the distance from this top of this gutter to where we want the bracket, so we made that measurement and stopped wrestling these inverters so many times, so it's just put it up once, hang it, so we got a little bit smarter on this install, but uh, I know a lot of times we do a plywood back, but if you think ahead, this is a lot easier than um, putting a plywood backing on it and just, just, you don't need that and you don't need to spend another hundred dollars on piece plywood. All right, we're back day two build out in the basement. Nice little farm here in an undisclosed location. We are going to pull in the solar today. Solar's down there. You can see the array. And uh, hopefully be able to do some testing by the end of the day. Got the generator, two-wire start, and battery charging figured out. Got some inline fuses to install with that today. And then just wire up the inverters. And then we have a bunch of 4 rot SER to get put up in the drop ceiling and we're going to be putting in two bypasses and one bypass between the utility and the inverter and then a bypass between the generator and either grid or inverter so sometimes we do multiple transfer switches or bypass switches to give the customer every option options to run each power source individually grid generator solar always making solar priority. And then we could run in any combination, grid and solar, grid or solar and generator, or just generator. So um, so that takes a, a few transfer switches and some explaining. And it usually takes a few grid down situ situation scenarios to let it sink into the customer no matter how well labeled you have your equipment. So that's what we're doing today, is getting this transfer switches run out and um, get all our disconnects in place, pull wire in. we got plenty to do, so I should stop sitting here. It's such a nice, cool morning. I cannot... So I'm sitting on these nice, comfortable chairs, and uh, I need to get to work. Sometimes you find meter base in the darndest places. I don't even know if this is legit. We're down this staircase. And the meter base is nicely rocked in here. But our problem is, guess what? We gotta add a fuse disconnect. And they recessed this. Well, they mounted it on the original wall and then they bricked or rocked around it. So Willis has been pounding away. So we wanna try to get, we're hoping to come block this off, come through here, land in the disconnect right down here. We got rocks in the way and then come out of that disconnect and come back up on the side through an LB back into the original path. We are trying to run the whole house, so we're gonna, we'll tie these two panels together. We're gonna put a bypass here, 200 amp. We already have our 200 amp bypass over here. So we'll have Solark or grid. The grid is gonna come in from the meter base that's through here. We'll get that up and over into the PDBs. And then we're gonna have the Generac generator coming down into this bypass. And so the center lugs on this bypass will feed this bypass. 
yeah, I well, can't help myself. I have to do it on every job, torture myself. And then we're using the two wire start wires. We got them labeled here. These are the two wire start wires that control the generator. And then this will be the battery charging circuit. 240 volt battery charging circuit and I'm going to land those on a double pole 15 amp but we are going to fuse protect that at 6 amps okay and what else do I got to do got to get the control wires over to the master inverter which we're going to make this one the master now we changed up because the batteries came with a pre-made cable which I'm trying to use but it wouldn't reach the other inverter but it reaches this one. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Testing time, we're gonna manually, well let's just manually start the generator. And um, what we wanna do now is give the option to be able to manually bypass all of our solar inverter, battery, and, and grid, and then uh, run the house on the generator alone. That's one of the options we're giving the customer here. We do that in this transfer switch. And there we go. So now we're on generators up and we gotta we do have to label this. And part of that also, just so you know, we double lug the top of this transfer switch. Don't don't pay attention to falling wires. That's that was here before us. Um, we daisy chain generator over to this PDB that splits and goes into the generator breaker on both 12Ks, and that will allow us to charge the batteries. That allows us to charge the batteries off the generator regardless of whether the generator is running the house. So we can just start the generator to charge batteries and pass through to the loads, or we can do what we're doing now, a manual generator run, testing the uh, generator out manually. So. I'm going to go ahead and take it off of the generator. We're running everything now fine. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to go back to the grid. So we're back on grid and we'll let that, we'll turn that generator off. And then eventually when we get these things fired up, we have a two wire start connection right here, terminal seven and eight to control the generator based on the state of charge of the two batteries. Or you can actually come to the screen and force the gen start if you'd like using the two-wire start function. So again, we took out that Generac ATS, put in the manual, gives us more options, and allows the Solark Master to be the ATS for the house now. Okay, let's go turn that Jenny off. Okay, we have just passed inspection, so that is good. Puts everybody in good mood, better mood, and. Um, I'm doing a turn the grid off, and as you can see, the little generator on the screen. So I did a force start on the generator. The two wire start signal is on, and we are charging the batteries about 5,000 watts. Again, these would be double. Let's just, just double that number. It's kind of close to 5,000 watts because I'm only charging at charge, charge tab, 40 amps, 50 volts. 2000 yeah so that's right number is good remember you can gen force this we also have the exercise on mondays for 10 minutes at eight in the morning so we are using the generator right now to charge the batteries up because the grid is off so the beauty of what they've done with the software and the ability to use your generator and they can use any generator is to do away with the controls so we did away with the ats and it's uh yeah look at the screen well it's, it's got the oh, signal yeah. got a little generator Very nice. so we are using the generator to do exactly what couldn't be done with the generac system which is what the customer originally had purchased from another solar company and then we were brought in on it so we kind of took over went with the Solark, much more capable than the generac use any generator to do what you want it to do, to be able to charge the batteries when the grid is down, if you get in trouble and there's not enough solar. We're running the entire house, the entire home. We left the load shaving modules that were in here. They can come in handy. They're shaving out the water heater, shaving out the clothes dryer, and the stove, if there's not enough power. That's the way those work. So we just left those in. Those will only help the system. 
so real excited to um, to do that so I'm going to go back in to the generator settings um, I'm going to go into the charge tab I am going to unforce the generator I'm going to turn that off there it goes just cancel the generator generator icon went away and um, it'll go the generator will go through a cool down I don't know if you can hear it but the generator is still running that's a little cool down can you hear it okay usable disconnect 200 amp and we're good so now I can go back on the grid We've gone full circle here back on the grid you'll see the grid light AC light will come on about now come on don't let me down there it is Look down this is yellow this will go through uh, its timeout which I have 30 seconds that will turn black so now that we're inspected the inspector will go back and uh, issue a power release to the local utility that we have an interconnection agreement with again make sure you get your interconnection agreements worked out before you go too far down the road because sometimes they have their own requirements you want to be uh, you want to go through that process first because sometimes they limit the amount of solar they got their hands on everything so be careful there so we're black so 30 seconds generator just shut off I don't know if you heard it get quieter so the generator just turned off that's so that's totally controlled by the master inverter there we go so the grid just came back on um, yep so we got grid power coming in grids re-established re and charging the batteries again these batteries were only at 25 percent that's why they're taking a lot of power I'm trying to get them back up they were at 24 percent when we started they're at 66 the beauty of life po is they charge fast this one's at 70 percent so pretty soon it'll be full if you have any questions let us know this is the way to go folks i know a lot of people you can't afford two inverters but man, oh man, when you make the break to go to two inverters, you're running the whole house and giving you all the creature comforts because that's going to produce 75 amps. I don't have any issues running any well pumps. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, misinformation on the Internet, of course, about Solarks. And um, so these are the smoothest, cleanest, quietest inverters on the market. And they just, they work. They work great. So, um, and these are the 12Ks, and the customer wanted an EMP hardened, or he might have gone for the 15s, because the 15 doesn't have this yet, but it's, it's on its way. It's going to be here soon. A lot of new things coming from Solark. i um, excited to try all the next latest, greatest product releases they have. No, they don't have the load shaving module ready. I am, I am so ready to try it. Okay, I am going to stop here. I hope that uh, this was helpful. And this is just, if you have any questions, let me know. So, but a lot of work, but finished product is just cooking. I'm just always in a good mood when I pass my inspection. It's just amazing how those inspectors have that much leverage over my life, but they do. Um, okay, that's about it. Engineer 775, signing out.